Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's tech tip. My name is Hannah from Structsoft Solutions, and today's topic for our tech tip is modify wall vertical structure. Today I'm going to show you how to modify the vertical structure in a wall and how to apply MWF sheathing for this specific situation. But please keep in mind that there are limitations within this specific wall setup that I'm going to show you. Okay, let's start. So I have created a little wall here. I haven't done anything else. All I've done prior to uh, starting this tech tip is that I have loaded uh, settings and I have modified the visual settings so that this wall is a little transparent so that we can see what's gonna happen within this wall. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a specific wall type. I'm going to create, well, I have already created a generic wall type. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit type. I will duplicate this wall. It's going to be called anything random. I'm just going to call it test for now. And now we're going to click on the structure. I'm going to set up a certain situation here within the structural settings. First of all, let's make the sample height something smaller. This is just to make it make life a little bit easier. And I'm going to zoom in here. Please make sure that you're on the section view because this is not going to work if you're in the plan view. You'll notice that these little commands here, these buttons, uh, they're grayed out, which means you can't access them. If you switch to section, these are going to be accessible, and this is where we're going to be working today. The first thing I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to make this a six inch uh, structural uh, wall. What I will do is I will add some layers. We all know that for MWF to work properly, we need to have only one structural layer here between the core boundaries. So I have created a finish. I'm going to create another finish and I'll move it down. So this is going to be another finish. I will only be working with this one. I'm going to give this a random thickness. So let's say it's going to be half an inch and half an inch. I'm not going to focus on the material because for today, this is not what we're going to be talking about. So I have created uh, these two layers. What we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I want to use the modify, the modify command here. What I want to do is hover over the little lines here until I'm able to see this lock. So I've clicked on it and I'm able to see this lock. When I hover over, this lock is going to turn yellow and it's going to say unlock to make this region extendable. And this is what I'm going to do. So I've unlocked this layer. That's it. I don't want to unlock anything else. I'm going to keep this one locked. I'm just going to click on OK and OK. Here, if you zoom in, you'll notice that the wall has changed a little bit. We have two arrows instead of one. I can actually go ahead and move this arrow up. It will move the finish layer on its own without affecting the rest of the wall. You can, however, if I actually remove the top constraint and make this unconnected, you can move the second arrow, but you'll notice that the first arrow is moving along with it. So I'm just going to keep this here, just connect it to level two. And here, if I take a look at the right, at the right side, you'll notice that the finish is extending a little bit upwards. So this can be used for different reasons. And what we're going to do for today is we're going to see how we can apply MWF to this very specific situation. I'm going to create another wall from scratch, and I'm going to create an MWF panel within this wall. Before I start, I'm just going to select the right wall. So it was called test, and I'm going to make sure that it gets constrained to level two. I'm just going to create it right here. So before I actually move the layer as I, as I did here, I'm going to panel this wall first. I'm going to panel it just using the create option. Please keep in mind that the quick create may not work for this specific situation. The technique I'm going to show you is the best way that I found to work with this uh, specific uh, wall setup. I'm going to use a light gauge default template set as active close create. And then OK. 
So you'll notice that this wall has been paneled within the correct uh, layer. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to access the wall itself and I'm going to move the sheathing, the, well, the layer that I'm going to place the sheathing in, which is the finish layer that I had unlocked previously. So since this wall uh, is not a multi-layer wall, I'm going to select it and go to Operations. Uh, I will click on Add Secondary. And then I'm going to go to the Wall Properties. What I can do here now is I can assign sheathing. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a default template. I'm not going to work uh, with this sheathing layer, but I'm going to give it a sheathing as well. I just want to show you the difference. So here we've created sheathing on both sides. You'll notice that the software has followed a specific situation uh, where we had applied a different length to the sheathing, so it was able to follow it properly. Okay, now we're going to make a little change uh, just, with the, just with the wall itself. If you ever wanted to make any changes and wanted to, for example, make this uh, layer here a little bit higher, or a little bit lower and you wanted the sheathing to follow that change what you would have to do is you would have to go you would select any part of the wall any member of this panel and then you would go to the regenerate however just make sure that you only regenerate the selected layer or if you if you have this option uh, clicked regenerate by category just make sure that you're only uh, regenerating the sheathing in this case, the sheathing is going to follow the change that you have done to the wall. But if you actually try to change or try to regenerate this wall or this, um, the structural members of this wall, I'm going to show you what happens. The structural layer is going to follow that change that happened to the sheathing. So just keep in mind that there is a limitation where you can uh, use this technique, uh, but you can, uh, when needed, uh, if you're not gonna use the uh, other uh, uh, sheathing uh, extrusion methods. That's it for this week's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week.